it should be good. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool. Okay. Thanks again for, for just doing this with me. I know we've been, uh, it's been a while. I, I've been a big fan of you since uh, a long time. Oh, so thank you, man. Thank you, dude. It's been a while since we just trying to catch up. I know we've seen each other in like, I, you know, I've been to your workshops, uh, conventions, things like that. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I think grabbing a beer and just having, just just talking, you know, it's been a while since we've been saying, let's do this or- I know, like, man. That really happened. And what a coincidence now with the, the COVID and the <laughs> pandemic and everything. Though. Maybe we finally get the chance to just talk and, yeah. and just chill. How, how you yeah, been? Pretty good, man. Like uh, just been growing my hair out. Uh, just been uh, also doing a lot of um, just art in times of COVID. So, you know, it's been uh, it's been interesting kind of try, trying to learn a lot more uh, with more time in my hands indoors. So, you know, yeah, I guess you know, that's that's a bonus of, of all of this. Right. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So I'm guessing you're working from home. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of it. You guys, too, I would imagine. Right. Yes. Like yeah. for the foreseeable future. Right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No. Nobody knows. Uh, I, you know, there are dates where we're just waiting on the government to say what's going to happen, but nobody really knows what what the future is going to be. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think we can all expect this part of the year, if not most of the year, will be you know work from home for a lot of us. I guess. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I try to stay away from the news as much as I can, but it's harder. I'm usually like asking the wife, like, "What's the latest?" Hmm. Will I still wear a mask? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like a mandate now here to uh, to wear masks. So you know, gotta yeah, for, for people who don't know, like, what, you're in, in you're in SF, right? right now? Yeah, I'm in, in San Francisco right now. Okay. And just to explain, the reason why I'm looking here is my camera cord is short, so I'm looking at Raf and not you know, <laughs> it's, it's more natural for me to look at my screen. So if I'm not making any eye contact, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So like uh, before we, I want to ask a bunch of questions about VR yeah. and, and your journey and, and that stuff. But before we, we go into that, like even for me, um, like let's talk about your, your career so far. Like how did you get started? How mm -hmm. did you fall in love in, with sculpting itself? Because I know you kind of like me, you started with just uh, 3D in general and not, not digital sculpting per se, right? Yeah. So how, uh, how did you get started? Uh, and for the most part, I haven't really touched clay in a long time. I mean, I've seen all your your clay works. It's it's amazing, and I'm always like, man, I want to get back to it. Just been lazy. <laughs> so, um, but pretty much, I started many many years ago um, in in the '90s in in Canada. Um, you know, I was pretty much kind of aimless as a kid. I didn't really know what to do because uh, I wasn't really good at anything else but art essentially just like drawing a lot but um so i was kind of trying to find my way and then came it came into like cg with like jurassic park and all that stuff so i was inspired to kind of uh take up cg but the problem was you know a lot, we weren't really rich and the courses were really expensive like back in canada so um, I just took this really kind of cheap course just to kind of learn as much as I could with the shortest amount of time. And then, you know, started like going from from little jobs and around Toronto that were really not related to anything in CG, like more like kind of production assistant, like buying donuts for directors, editing you know, TV commercials and stuff like that, and then graphic design. So I, I kind of jumped from like, industry to industry multiple times over in Toronto. And then I, um, I went to Maryland for, uh, I was able to get a, a job there um, at Bethesda. So I did some video games and then uh, went back. It's, uh, it's a lot of like little detours here and there. And then, you know, cut a long story short, I was able to get a job at ILM, which is like my dream job. Um, mm -hmm. But I started off at Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but when you when you uh, work for video games, is was ZBrush around or oh, no. still, <laughs> still? This was pre ZBrush, like uh, I, I call it the point by point modeling. <laughs> that was that was my era of of uh, when I started, where you know you literally literally have to like put that vertex, 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 vertex. It's a mm -hmm. polygon vertex. Mm -hmm. You know, you're kind of just like I would I would start off in flat kind of lay out lay out the 
the topology with mm -hmm. the image and then you know go on the side select the the cross section pull it out form it on the side and then cross section by cross section until you have like a, okay. a volumetric shape uh, and that's how we did it. I think you still come from that era, right? Or were you like totally ZBrush? Oh, no, no. I did, I did my, my share of that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we, we both know how, how, uh, how the days were before, before yes. ZBrush where you just had to like click, you know, drag, click, yeah. drag. Um, but the benefit of that was, you know, it really taught me to, to respect topology as a very important part of the process where I think a lot of, um, a lot of people, I think, who kind of, grew up with ZBrush, kind of, you know, uh, Z remesh, and then that's it. I think for me, like when I, when I work on like, say the Hulk, for example, at ILM, I would still do the same thing. Like I would like start from a, a polygon, like just extrude, 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 and like be really specific about the topology um, that way. So that was the benefit of learning for sure. from that method. Uh, but um, yeah, to, to pretty much finish that up, like, uh, from from ILM, I started off as a when I got the job there. I started off as a hard surface modeler, mm -hmm. um, working on like NURBS and stuff like that, uh, Alias Studio, and uh, you know I pretty much had to prove myself to be a character artist there. And um, Andrew Cause actually of Anatomy Tools was really the one who who kind of um, you know I had had an had an addition there audition I should say yeah. to become a creature artist and. To prove myself uh, to him, and thankfully that worked out because, you know, I mean, I love being a hard surface modeler, but I think in my heart I really wanted to be a creature artist because of, you know, Jurassic Park and dinosaurs and you know Star Wars, a lot of that stuff that inspired me as a kid. You know, I wanted to kind of do that at ILM. So, yeah. and then from there, it's just like, you know, kind of was from job to job, like dream job to dream job. I've had the opportunity to so. How was that, uh, I guess, interview process for LLM? Do you think, is it different now that where people are trying to apply? Like, how, how did you actually get that job coming from that? Uh, it was like one of the most most surreal uh, things in my life because, you know, growing up as a kid, like loving their movies, Star Wars, I, I never really even thought about like applying for a job there at LLM. Right? Yeah. I was kind of like, ah, whatever, it's not going to happen. It's just too big of a, a, a like a lofty goal right um but i think i was in texas i was like i had a, a website geocities back then you know like like the free website i would just put a lot of my um my works there uh and um and then i get an email from someone at ilm or no ILM because he was using a Hotmail account. It was like, "Hey, would you like to be? Uh, would you be interested to, to, to get a job here at at, at uh, Lucas or ILM?" And I'm like, "Sure, yeah, right. <laughs> Hotmail, sure." But deep down, I'm like, "Please let this be true." So I kind of like played it cool. I was like, uh, "Yeah, sure, I'd be really interested to, uh, you know, to get a job there." Um, and then he replied with an ILM account, the, the, the next email. So I'm like, oh shit, now it's on, man. That's like, this is the opportunity that, uh, that's presenting itself that, that, and then it got really scary because that meant like, I could not fail this, like the opportunities there. I, I really had to, to like, just go for it and, and just bust my ass and do whatever, give my, my best portfolio, put my put f best foot forward. Yeah, and um, so they flew me there. Um, the interview actually was very, very chill. Like it was really laid back. Like it was uh, like Jeff Campbell, Andrew, Steve Applin, who's this amazing animator slash uh, uh, character artist, um, and uh, they were talking about this software there. And this was before ZBrush, right? They were talking about the software called um, iSculpt, where you know there's this. Hey, Gio, if you ever if you ever get this job, you'll 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 get to use this unbelievable software called iSculpt, where you get to sculpt the surface like it's clay. Mm -hmm. And before then, like coming from you know point by point modeling, like that that might as well have been VR, right? Like it was too so sci-fi to be able to kind of like push and pull surfaces like it's clay. So I was like, holy crap, really? You guys, have, I didn't know ILM was that advanced. Mm -hmm. um, so when I did start there and got to use it, it was like an amazing kind of revelation you know this was like 
probably five years before ZBrush came out. I had yeah. I didn't know about this. That's that's awesome. What what happened? Did, did they abandon that once? Uh, or is, was that a proprietary like software? Yeah, they... it's a proprietary. I think they still use it. I mean, that's. Uh, but the problem was when I, when I was using that, it was all mouse. I wasn't using. So, and 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 because of that, I think I I, I still sometimes with ZBrush I still used a mouse. Mm -hmm. Um, like for the Hulk and the entirety of my time there at ILM, I was using the mouse to sculpt a lot of the the the, the creatures there. So, yeah. Well, I respect you more for that than before. <laughs> oh, it's just a matter of getting used to it, right? Like you get used to something hard, it becomes like the norm. But then when you look back, it's like that was crazy that I did. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's necessity. So. And I know you do a lot of awesome stuff, you know, there. And then um, was your transition to then Oculus like right after that? I oh, know you went you went to Valve after that, right? Yeah, I went to Valve. Um, yeah, it was twelve years later, and then. Actually, Valve, I, I started talking to early on in my career, um, mm -hmm. even before, yeah, like I, I think during the cir Circa Half-Life 2 era um, or after Half-Life or no, before Half-Life, they they flew me there and and I, you know, they interviewed me and like the really rough interview, I got the job, but then I didn't have the credentials to qualify for a visa. So I, I missed out on that. But um, I always kept Valve at the, uh, you know, at the, in 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 my head as like, man, I eventually want to go there once you know I'm 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 done with ILM. And so, twelve years later at ILM, I was like, hey, would you guys be interested to uh, to get me there? So they brought me through the interview process again, and I, you know, thankfully I got the job again. But um, yeah, no, it was it was it was a it was a an amazing company to to learn from essentially. Valve is one of those companies that I have a few friends that work there, but I have no idea how, like I don't hear a lot about the, the what, they, <laughs> what they're doing, like what's, the, you know, what's what's like from the inside, like, cause you don't see, often yeah. you see they have so much money and they're putting out so many different products that you don't see exactly the, it's not like a, a game company that has like, oh, here's the end goal. Like we all work towards this, like mm -hmm. efforts that, like it, to me, it's like a little mystery box. They have no idea. Yeah, and then when they put something out, it's like holy crap! Yeah. It's like <laughs> Half Life Alex. What the hell? It's like the most amazing, you know, that was crazy, yes. thing. Yeah. So, so how long did you stay there before uh, went to Oculus? Um, about a year and a half, I think. Okay, close to two years. Yeah. And how how was that? Then? How was that? How was that? Uh, how did you find out about it? I don't know if it was right at the beginning. Or were people already using it, Medium, and was Oculus already out when you got the the opportunity to join? Oh, I'm sorry, to join Oculus from Valve. Yeah. Oh, um, uh, yeah. So when I, when I joined Oculus, it was uh, Medium was already uh, like it was already there, but I, I kind of didn't really use it. Um, you know, I, I met the team and I kind of like played around with it, but it didn't really kind of resonate with me when I first uh, used it. Um, I was kind of like, oh, this is cool, but it's a bit too different and hard from what I was used to with ZBrush and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. I kind of like put it in the back burner until like, re you know, later on when I was kind of like, man, this is, there's something here that's really cool that I could, I could definitely see myself really getting into and help, you know, push the software mm -hmm. to, to a level where, you know, it, people will see it for something other than just like to create cartoony or, 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 or simplified uh, cool creations. But I wanted to kind of prove the use case of, um, you know, like you could do this for, for video games or VFX, you know, like high fidelity uh, creations essentially. So, yeah. So, so I guess before that, I mean, you, I know you're happy, you're helping with some of the, uh, the other projects they had going on, right? Like different, um, VR experiences and, and games. Yeah. Like that, right? Okay. Yeah, we, we I was in a team in Seattle with uh, Kenneth Scott and a bunch of like really uh, really really awesome AAA you know uh, games people, and we we pretty much did the first VR experiences in in the Rift that came with a Rift. Oh. Um, so the you know you just put it on and there's like like a catalog of, of experiences you can you can kind of go through. 
So we, we kind of did that like in like five or six months, some, some really, really crazy schedule. Um, yeah, it was intense. It was intense. Like, cause that was like when I, when I started VR was, a, was obviously non-existent in terms as a marketplace, right? Like VR has been around for a long time, but like as a product, we were like all hands on deck to like make sure that this, this thing works and ships yeah. with a quality of, of, of experiences that'll, that'll hopefully validate it. So, yeah. So I guess when you say it was kind of intense, I, I totally believe you because of just the nature of the amount of projects and, uh, and just trying to get stuff out the door, right? Like, especially when you're doing a uh, little smaller experiences or just kind of shorter games, you know, it's, Mm. a lot of just uh sharing resources and stuff like that did you actually enjoy that i know some some people actually like to work at smaller studios because you 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 have more input you know there's it's a lot more creative uh just there's it's not like a you know a 60 million budget it's just like mm. you just put out a lot of smaller fun fun little things that how, how was that experience for you yeah no I, I first experienced that at valve and i think ever since then i'm like man this is this is the I mean, you know, I'd gladly work on like AAA, like the you know, Last of Us, God of War. I want to experience that that level of game making. But you know, what from coming from ILM, where everything was like micromanaged, you know, you're you're pretty much at the beck and call of the director. You know, then I went to Valve, where it's like there's this like freedom to to really stretch yourself and, and, and not just be sort of like, Oh, I'm just going to model this creature. And then that's it. You know, I like, I had to like learn how to do many things kind of almost think of things differently. You know, what, why am I doing this? Is it, it's not just because it's cool. I have to, I have to like find a reason. What, what is the value for, for the company versus like, Oh, but it's cool. You know, like as an artist, Oh, it's cool. Um, and so I think working in smaller teams, you have to think that way. And I think I appreciated that, you know, because uh, for the longest time, for 12, 13, 14 years, I was always wired to be, I'm doing this because it's cool. Working at Valve trained me to kind of almost be more like a, you know, producery kind of a thinking, which is always, always a good thing because you're a little bit more pragmatic in your process. And so I think that you know that kind of mindset is made for smaller teams because you're kind of trying to uh take on many other things with with like uh optimized time as as your your tool like you kind of want to make sure that every every task is optimized you know yeah. because you're you're involved with so many different things maybe like concepting you know the the alien creature building it making sure that it resonates with users and all that stuff, you know, user testing. So, you know, it's just a lot more interesting things, but at the end of the day, I'm, you know, I still love just character, character modeling, but I think all that other stuff helps, you know, I think it's good to kind of stretch yourself out so that when you go back to your, your focus with your, your, your chosen vocation, you're much better at it to deliver as a product. Right. Yep. So, no, 100%. And I love that you said that, like it is like looking at the bigger picture, like even even at a, at a bigger studio where people are very, a lot more specialized and sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. we hire people for that one specific thing. Like this guy is amazing at uh, like dragons, right? And he only does that and all that. Uh, even with that mindset for, for bigger studios, which is, I think it comes, definitely comes with experience and being involved on so many, so many different projects. And, and once you get more of a bigger picture of like, the amount of things that you, they we all need to accomplish, right? Because mm -hmm. yeah, when you first get a task and you're only doing executing on that, and you're you just you're the best at what you do, and you're just focusing on 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 delivering on that task. You sometimes you 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 know you don't get the full picture of what everything else has been going on. And, and a bigger yeah. project, like even a, a big AAA, uh, when you look at the amount of things that needs to be done, <laughs> the people who who actually want to be a little more aware and want to help and, and know the value and, and like, of course, like directors and their leads and there are more people that can give you that information, but the people who want to serve the project are usually the ones who, who get more complicated tasks and grow in the roles. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I love that you said that because it, it's a very thing that it, it's a thing that, that we don't talk about, about a lot, especially for people who are starting 
where yeah. you, you just need to focus on your craft. I think having a bigger picture, learning, animation, mm -hmm. rigging, like everything that yeah. I think we all learned when ZBrush wasn't around. Yeah. Uh, it's very important. And, right. And especially now that ZBrush is so big and it's so easy, mm -hmm. people sometimes forget that as a whole, as a team, there's more, there's a, it's, you know, there's a process to, to the beast and you have to learn, you have to be interested in learning. Yeah. Yeah. I think it just helps in general, like, you know, having even like beyond just like CG, like what, what is it like to user test, you know, like kind of be involved in how, how that is conducted, like see how people think about certain things. Um, you know, some, some might say an artist, artist might go, well, that's just like, you know, not, that's not art because you're letting others influence. Well, you know, you're kind of really a, a for hire person building a product, right? Like your own art is your own personal. I'm, I'm never going to use or test my art, but you know, mm -hmm. uh, to, to be a, become a better uh, artist in a production environment, you need to really branch yourself out outside of just art. You know, you need to kind of see the other aspects of things. And I think, I hope students are being taught that in schools, you know, not just like, you know, you have to be, you know, like, you know, almost like that diva mentality of like, uh, um, just always fight for your art. Like, no, man, that's, it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit trickier than that is, is what I've learned. Cause I was exactly like that early on in my career. You know, I was like, no, man, it gotta, it's gotta be this, it's gotta be this. But the more I kind of work, you kind of see a bigger picture. Right. And I'm sure the, the same case is with you, you know, taking on the role that you, you have. Right. So you yeah. got to have that sensibility, I would imagine. <laughs> No, hundred percent, and that's something that that you definitely have to learn on the job as well. I know like schools mm -hmm. have some sort of, uh, you know, especially art schools where you go to more of a concept art that that you put in, you know, you they teach you how to put your work in front of people and and mm -hmm. listen to the small. I guess some school does, but like listen to the small the cues of like you know what is this person actually thinking or what what does this person actually think about my art? And sometimes mm -hmm. you don't get that specific feedback, but you can kind of. I guess user tested in a way of like just seeing how people react and, and working for games, especially it is a huge part of it. I, like I learned, you know, in the job that art sometimes need to take a, you know, take the, the back burner into the, the results, I guess, like sometimes you want to yeah. make the prettiest or the, the mo most beautiful piece of art uh, when you just have to look into the reaction and, and what some things are going to cause. That's why you see in a lot of games where maybe the art is not amazing, but there's something that comes out of it. Like, yeah. maybe, like they push it in some ways that their reaction is different than you, if it would be realistic or something like that. Yeah. So I, I definitely learned, uh, especially in this past few years of like letting go of some of my own, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say culture, but like some of my own taste just for yeah, like, just sort of learning what people actually like. So yeah, that's, that's a, that is a big part. That is hard, but yeah, it's needed. Yeah. 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 That balance too, right. You don't want to just do whatever it's trendy or whatever, like people want to see. Yeah. Just finding that balance is tricky. Yeah. You got to also fight for something, right. But it's like, it's, it's always, it's not just like, you know, this. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. man. And then building out audience, audience is another thing too, because sometimes you are putting it out for, and that happens in games a lot when you put something out for a certain audience that expects something expectation right mm -hmm. you know, if you keep going and you believe in something you slowly build that audience to what the what you're actually making and and you, you know you will find people who actually enjoy what uh the things that you do so yeah there's that piece of them as well so we just going into vr i guess a, a little bit more like how how was that for you like you mentioned that you first didn't like it but then it kind of clicked or you just wanted to try like how was that yeah, um, so like to be a little bit more detailed on why I didn't like it, I was like, you know, first time I put it on, I'm like, oh man, this is amazing. It's like, in, it's in front of you, but just, you know, from from this, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I still use a Intuos, not even a Cintiq, but I'm like, you know, yeah. I've been using that for the most part of my career. And then all of a sudden I'm like trying to control air. Um, it was like really, really hard to, to to control the form and and I'm very very meticulous and precise when it comes to like 
the silhouette has to be exactly the way I want it to be. And so I wasn't getting that with medium. Yep. Um, and so, you know, I kind of put it down for like six months. And then as I said, I, I was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to try it again, tried it again. And, you know, I, one, once I kind of gave myself about like, um, well, let's say about a week, I kind of started seeing sort of techniques and, and, I was able to develop certain things to kind of circumvent the lack of um, of control that I had. And then once that happened, I was like, oh, man, that sense of excitement. You know, that's all you need, right, as an artist. Like once once you see the possibility of what you could do <clears throat> with the software, and, and, and it's hard. Like, you know, ZBrush took me a while, too. But once, once that happened, I was like all in. So when that happened with Medium, I was kind of like, all right, setting myself projects. And the more projects that I gave myself, the more complicated they became the more i'm kind of like finding these methods to kind of like um you know how, how do i do scales you know like okay let's let's figure it out like how does the how do how do the clay people do it like steve wang brian wade and those guys right like let's see if 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 that will work in medium because that's a little bit more applicable what they do in in medium than in zbrush because of the the nature of the technology which is like sdf like voxel base so you can actually you know whereas zbrush it's like you pull it out of the surface medium is you can you can add on separate objects um so i was like doing that and then yeah it just kind of became a natural part of my uh my process because i'm all about like form clean forms and and with medium's layer system i was able to kind of really create a system where i'm like okay primary forms these are the simple shapes and then you kind of just combine it and then whittle it down to like tertiary, secondary shapes and all that stuff. So, yeah, when you when you first start using it, for sure, you get that uh, clash of like, wait, this is completely different. Mm -hmm. and for me, it took a a couple a couple tries just to like, yeah, like break it down and fully understand uh, how people were doing it. And I think especially having someone like you, like just showing the ways, and mm -hmm. it definitely helps for someone who's, who, who's trying to just use it as if it was ZBrush, right? Because I think that's the yeah. first thing that people do. Right? And you were doing like amazing stuff, man. Like I remember the we were in um, LA and you you were there doing it. I'm like, fuck. Well, I think, <laughs> well, so thank you. But I, I think it's because I tried it before and, and I just mm -hmm. tried it uh, your way when we were first doing it, but go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and, and, and but I do get that you know, you're so used to one thing like ZBrush that I think, you know, something's so new, you know, it, it takes a while. And, and, and I was kind of like, well, you know, I'm noticing like, uh, it's slowly picking up, but you know, in, in character artists, I was surprised that, you know, I thought it would pick up a lot faster than it would because it's like, yo man, it's VR. It's like close to clay. But I think, um, I was surprised by how slow it was. I think it's now actually gaining more momentum um but uh yeah like when i when you started picking it up i'm like oh i got excited like ah raf's raf and glauco are like doing live streams with it like you know <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta get back to it it's you actually, gotta, man. It, is yeah. really fun. it is something like just seeing that on your face is completely a completely different vibe than what you get from from mm -hmm. zbrush or for for anything else for me i think the i think the learning curve is something that that it's, it's hard for people to get into it and just and just do something that because you expect kind of the same quality, right? And, and yeah. there's definitely a learning curve to get uh, to get to the same speed. I think. I yeah. Know, how, how do you? What do you think about just how the process wise and, and the the speed of what you get in ZBrush versus what like now you get at, at Medium? Is it kind of the same, or are you still fighting? For the the form stuff, like primary, secondary, tertiary, I can definitely get it cleaner and faster in Medium. ZBrush, no contest. It's like that finesse, the level of finesse and detail. Um, it's like, it's unbeatable uh, to me. So I, I, I switch back and forth between medium and ZBrush because you can just go medium, export to ZBrush and then bring it back in. And then, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's a very non-linear thing because a lot of people think, well, medium, then, then what do you do after? Well, you can, it's just like any other software, right? You could like export out an OBJ so and import OBJs. So, um, yeah. 
so using it as more of just another tool in the in the tool set to get yeah results. yeah for sure it's 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 just like you know for me medium and zbrush go hand in hand together because you know again form and then detail and sometimes i bring it back for medium for even more crisper detail because you can do separate layers position it on the surface and then when you combine it you get that nice crisp intersection that you it's pretty hard to get in zbrush right. so if you're doing scales and stuff like that like medium's amazing for that stuff and then zbrush you get you know you, i start putting like uh the the sort of more organic breakups and stuff like that mm -hmm. um let's get out of facebook here there we go yeah how was the uh, process to developing the tool? Like, were you working with an uh, engineer and like, giving feedback or was he watching you work and brainstorming some ways of like executing some stuff? Yeah, no, it was um, pretty much all that. Like the, the team's really, really receptive to like feedback. And it's just me, it's not just me, like the, the medium community's grown by a large amount. Like you have amazing artists there who are giving feedback, you know, left and right. Um, but yeah, like, since I was embedded in Oculus, not really in the Medium team back when they were at Oculus or now at Adobe, but I wasn't officially in the Medium team, but I was like, you know, obviously it's a sculpting software and I'm a character artist. I'm like, I am gonna, like, <laughs> I'm gonna give some feedback here. But yeah, we, we would, you know, I, I'm good friends with uh, Lydia, who, who's one of the founding members. And so, you know, I would always give her like a list of, wish list of uh, oh man Lydia it'd be amazing if we have this this and this you know like so it was great to have uh, influence uh, that early on in, in, in the uh, the birth of that software so that's awesome yeah, yeah. I'm always uh, curious like when we're gonna start seeing more of like the other tools combining in the with the VR world because I know like even using ZBrush finding that like even visualizing in VR, but still using a ZBrush would be something that I think a lot of people will be interested. I I, I will be in interested in. Yeah, that's kind of that, you know, that kind of medium. Uh, or I guess medium with yeah. VR, and, but not using the the controls. Like actually sculpting in the in the tablet, but like looking at it in in the headset. I don't know. Mm -hmm. what that happened, but. That'd be amazing, actually. Like sometimes I just want to sculpt with the the tablet in medium, you know. But yeah. uh, and with just the headset, um, that would be amazing. But yeah, like ZBrush, uh, even like you know, um, hell Maya or something. Like a lot of tools just to kind of visualize it in in, in VR, like it's in front of you, is a good thing. So yeah. that's why I actually invited you here so you can uh, make that happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure, man. <laughs> So, so I, one thing I wanted to just uh, ask you more and, and I guess <clears throat> tell people is, is that different way to approach it, right? Because I think when I first saw you doing that, it was kind of like mind blowing just to me of like, oh, okay, now, okay, that makes sense. Like, instead of just trying to carve it out, because the first thing that even when Glauco and, and, and myself, we were using is like, first thing you want to try to find is that standard brush mm -hmm. and that, that, uh, clay, that damn standard and just kind of like, move it move things around like when we first used it move wasn't even a tool yeah and then they, they and you guys added on the on that and uh, how, how did you get how did you have that idea of like i know you mentioned like just looking at uh i guess traditional artists and how they they approach it like how how was that for you of just like developing that pipeline because it is very different of just adding forms mm -hmm. and building it up that way was that something because of the limitations of the tool or you just you just had that idea and then tried it and, and it actually worked i think it was um i got the idea from well two people uh, in back when i was uh helping out andrew in anatomy tools we were i was tasked with um helping him that ecarche figure that he has um we did an exercise where we broke that down into different shapes like sphere uh, block for the head you know like your typical how you would break down like the human form with like simple geometry mm -hmm. uh, so <clears throat> like I, that was already in my head in, in terms of how I would also view shapes anyway like a separate separate shapes interlocking together so that's that's always sort of how I visualize things and and so when I started using medium 
I would just, you know, it kind of became natural to just start doing that as separate shapes. I'm kind of laying down, intersecting, and then combining. And then uh, Sam, uh, and one, in my opinion, one of the best artists, CG artist, Sam Poirier. I'm always mangling his name, Poirier. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't seen his work, guys, check it out. He was actually one of the first ones to to start doing the layer system, like where he's like uh, on separate layers, laying down the shapes like it's clay. And I'm like, man, yeah, of course. And then I connected the dots between what I was, you know, kind of uh, doing before for Andrew and how I think about shapes. And and ever since then, that's that's one of the main ways I work. I mean, I still work like sort of sketchy sort of like the standard brush style for like sketchy armature um like the gesture line right you're kind of just like you want to do something rough and then from there once you're happy with it then i start overlaying the the separate geometric forms uh to create the, the final piece mm -hmm. so yeah yeah i actually remember uh, sam's work when like back in the days when he did like he was amazing at sculpting for like from out of nowhere, he was just doing all those crazy uh, yeah. fantasy, sci-fi, fantasy type of pieces with like super realistic human forms and, and yeah. he kind of disappeared for a while and then he came back with the VR stuff yeah. and like mind blowing. Yeah, it's, stuff oh, awesome. it's like masterpieces each one. Each, every time he puts something out, it's like, oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> so amazing, yeah. For those uh, who who never seen you sculpting uh, with that type of techniques, like can you explain a little bit how how that works? Yeah. Um, so, for example, for this creature on the screen right now, um, you know, early stages of that would be uh, like say maybe blocks for the like when I say blocks, like primitives, like a square stamp or a square shape for the the, the cheeks, sphere for the the maw, you know, like a elliptical elliptical uh shape for the the forehead so if you look at that it's like you're kind of seeing you know big shapes you know which is my intent like i think defining those big shapes early on as simple as they are mm -hmm. and and trying to retain the essence of that even in the final piece like if you look at it like the ma would still be roughly sort of like a spherical shape right i i, I didn't want to detract anything to get away from that I, I wanted to keep it as simple as that so that you're still reading it as such um so early on i would just you know lay those things out like you know those shapes would be sort of like maybe a square that sort of uh, kind of formed to be sort of wings so those are those are all separate layers in medium and the beauty of it is i can select each layer and compose it non-destructively right before committing to to merging it all, like a, like a Photoshop layer, you know, you can merge all layers into into one. Um, so once I'm kind of like separately modifying things, and this is still in the primary stage, I'll, I, I'll select every single layer, combine it as one, and then I start smoothing, making it organic, like rounding off the, the, the box into sort of a more organic cheekbone. And then from there, once I'm kind of getting a strong sense of the primary shape of the character, I'm going to start creating layers again for the secondary shape breakup. Uh, and then, you know, rinse and repeat, tertiary. And then until we get to this stage where, you know, I'm just kind of like detailing using the inflate tool. And then what I would do on top of that, you know, I would the, the, those trenches that I'm creating, I would still create layers and start putting actual shapes where those things are so that they're not just, you know, kind of soft transitions. I can actually put like a, a stretched out ellipse where that, uh, where those two forms are, where that channel mm -hmm. is, and then combine it so that it becomes like a, a really sculptural uh, detail rather than just sort of surface. I'm still thinking of thinking of it as form, right? And, and that's the beauty of medium. You can kind of just keep going down the form hierarchy as layers and and just work with that and it's it's amazing that way you know I'm, I'm i get like i think really clay like results because a lot of clay sculptors do that right like they they would sculpt that trench and then they would take a dab of clay put like uh clay for the height and then like brush it or torch it or something and then and then kind of uh run a run a kind of like trench there again to kind of pump it up right so kind of same methodology 
when you say layers, layers is, is that a new tool that you that you put up? A new, uh, I guess that's why you just call it different. But I'm gonna say object. Is that like a new object every layer? Or yeah, I think. Really, go think of it like a subtool, right? Like a, a, each layer is like a subtool, essentially. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like it, with the uh, ZBrush being so easy to just like do whatever you want, just like go mm -hmm. crazy. Like it. Sometimes people forget the the basic form is what like the most important just the construction right like of the character and i yeah. think it definitely shows when when you're saying like you know like put a, a lip take or a, a sphere and a, a cube and preserving those shapes is like it's very easy to, to lose that in zebra especially if you're starting and you've just you know for the fact that it's so easy to just move things around and everything just looks like very round so you see models like that where everything is just blobby and, and stuff like that so that bringing that into into medium, I think, yeah, it definitely shows the the mm -hmm. construction forms again. Yeah, and I think it's the same thing with clay. Like even though it is hard, I think it's harder to sculpt in clay. It, it's also just so easy to just do whatever and smudge things and mm -hmm. and kind of break it. So yeah, yeah. I, I love that, and I think it definitely shows on your models when. Oh, thanks. That kind of difference of like seeing the forms and and the basic shapes in there. Yeah, like primary shapes, man. That's like every time i talk to a student like that's the most primary secondary shapes is the most important like retain that throughout the rest of the life of that model till the detail and and you'll be good you know so yep so dude how, how was your journey and now, now we've seen it this this model to me is like amazing with the anatomy stuff that you've been up to pull on your all your projects i know you started to do more of those anatomy a little more kind of a, I'm going to say artistic anatomy of like a little mm -hmm. more uh, artsy type of stuff. Like mm -hmm. how was the anatomy, your anatomy kind of learning curve? I know you work with uh, Carlos um, and I know he's a master at that as well. Was that what triggered for you or that come before? before I, think, I think it was before Carlos. It was a necessity for ILM because you know like okay when I when I got the creature modeling gig after after being a hard surface modeler there you know Andrew was like obviously Andrew who's anatomy tools he's mm -hmm. like now you got to learn anatomy to you like okay well yeah well you know reading all the books you know kind of went through the the typical kind of path of like a character artist like okay sculpting in clay all that stuff reading books collecting books um and just practice, like drawing practice, life drawing. Uh, I mean, I'm rusty right now, so I'm, I'm like, you know, always trying to learn stuff. But with Carlos, what he really taught me is to to not be bound by uh, human anatomy, actually. So it's the inverse of that. Um, taking what I know from human anatomy and really, you know, like for this guy, uh, you know, like making sure that it's not like a proportion where a, a normal real guy can just fit in that suit you know i'm kind of like choosing to distort and and kind of play with with forms mm -hmm. which is sort of the where i've been for a lot of years which is why i've kind of forgotten a lot of the uh the more sort mm -hmm. of um medical based uh stuff you know human anatomy mm -hmm. stuff which i'm trying to get back into um but uh you know it's always sort of like a constant catch-up for me because you know like now that i'm doing like more kind of I'm, I'm working actually with a uh, tweeter head, uh, Dave Igo. So yep. more like kind of human pose uh, statues, right? So like I need to kind of like up my my knowledge again to get to where I was back in the day so I can do justice to, to those figures. So I'm kind of like catching up again now. So <laughs> I can I can't I can't I can't wait to see you when you start doing figures. If you're going to like the more of the statues and, mm -hmm. and that type of stuff, I'm gonna have to start saving money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it's good. fun. I've I've always wanted to get into that. Like, you know, it's been you know like kind of uh, too much personal or not too much work than that. I I never got into like the the whole figure scene, but you know, like seeing what you did with the sideshow stuff and you know like Dom like you know selling his own figures. Yeah. Like uh, a lot of a lot of three D artists like having their own you know product line as figures like yeah. man I, I got to get into that that three D printing thing. Well, I think to me, if you start if you were to do your own uh, statues, like that would be amazing. Like, mm -hmm. I know a lot of 
a lot of the stuff that I have here is from uh, Shiflet as well, Shiflet Brothers. Yeah. And I think they definitely found a uh, kind of a, a style that, you know, is definitely their own. And I think you have that. I mean, I think Thank you. We, you, all your work that you have, that you've putting out, like it definitely speaks you. So if you, if you do start making a, your, your statues, I think you'll be, you know, it's not easy, but I think you'll be successful. <laughs> That's all I don't I mean, I'm sure Dom's like, you know, hustling, you know, doing all that stuff, like attending these conferences, you know. Yeah, definitely the statue industry, like to be a, a individual and making your own statues, like it's a, it's a big initial investment for what you get back, mm -hmm. right? And unless you sell hundreds and hundreds of statues that you start seeing a profit, like it is definitely for the passion for yeah myself yeah. and i think dom's the same way like you make you make a little bit of money on the side but it's definitely like one piece will pay for the other and you mm -hmm. just keep you just keep going because it's something we all love and and i think the result is what we kind of aim for but it's definitely not for the money so and yeah. that's where I, I think some people fail when they go in for the money and they realize it's not you know an amazing business unless you unless you have licenses and mm -hmm. you make hundreds and you like you make the production offshore and all yeah. that all that stuff which is like a you know a job on itself yeah it's a uh, full-time job i would i would imagine right yeah. like uh yeah sure so yeah definitely for the passion i, I if you need any help i'll definitely help you all because I, I would i would love to have some of your pieces oh yeah no I, <laughs> that'll be an honor man thank you <laughs> yeah we've been doing this stuff for for a while and then i've been a i've been a big fan which is awesome how, how did actually okay this is another thing I wanted to ask you because what I know you've been always putting out work, um, and I think you found a specific way to to show your work. And I, I always bring up your name when I'm talking to friends and students, and I think even here on the stream a couple of times where uh, we're talking about presentation of the work. And I think you found a specific way of presenting your work, which is more about the the sculpt itself, right? Like you're always focusing on. Uh, these the i already said the sculptor but like as a sculptor here's like a masterpiece that i'm working on and it's not so much like here's an amazing render of like of this character right so how for you what what does that mean um or if i'm just talking nonsense it is, and it's just like what can you talk a little bit about that like for your, mm -hmm. your own kind of i don't know if you ever thought about it that yeah, way yeah I, I actually do because um you know, obviously, like on my feed, I see a lot of really amazing three D renders. You know, models take taken like down to the poor level, which which I eventually want to do. But I'm like, man, I don't have the patience for that. I don't know if it's because because I'm old. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like just you know, learning all that. But I do want to do that. But for now, I think, and I've always been this way. Like I think um, because I play a lot of importance on 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 the sculpture of the the character. It doesn't mean I don't have any respect for the other stuff right this is just my chosen pool i want to kind of play in this is this for me is what's important and so i think the the way to show that off has always been you know for the longest time oh just show it as a screen grab and zbrush because it it's showing the raw work right um mm -hmm. but then then i got kind of bored with it so i'm kind of like well you know let's 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 mess around and, and kind of add some physical aspects to this and stuff you know substance painter and render it out just to kind of have it be more presentable looking like a, a maybe stat a statue in a museum or something um right. so you know i kind of want to keep it simple but then you know say i, I did a, a recent uh, batman you know i kind of want to get into like the fan art scene like i'm doing batman so even then i kind of don't want to go into like oh spend like all this time on the the pores like weeks and weeks and weeks and then subsurface the hair i just want to be like okay slap some color in there like a bowen statue you know like it's simple it's elegant or like alex ross like you don't you, you don't see the pores it's still form based so i'm um, i even though i kind of want to get into the more finished looking stuff i still want to kind of go the opposite of where i think a lot of people in cg are taking it where it's like super duper detailed I still want to kind of retain that simplicity because I, for me, it's always like, yeah, there's there's beauty in the simplicity, and also I'm able to make more with with less time, right? So that's sort of that's sort of my train train of thought with that kind of yep. stuff. That's yeah. awesome. That's great, and I think yeah, definitely for forms, it's it's the most important thing. 
like it's and it's something that I always bringing it back because you know especially for students and people who are starting where and that's why I keep bringing your work up it's like you don't need like this crazy presentation you're going to get higher because of this like this is the the skill that you need to have right mm-hmm. like character artists like uh in in mm-hmm. game studios or you know zebra artists for the for the toy uh the sculpting or the the sculptural uh industry the mm-hmm. sculpture is the like this is your job like right like this you have to be a master of at, at sculpting at forms you know zebra should be whatever it is like i think that's like you just find a way to present that in a way that you know that people will see your skills so it definitely comes comes through in your work and i think i always fight that balance as well i always like when i started doing a lot of renders and um more of like a, a little kind of concept or or comic or there's something that's a little more of a of a pretty render mm-hmm. I, i've always like there's some pleasure that i get off of that but i always feel that something is missing and i always go mm-hmm. back to like now, now I'm just going to do a sculpt and just show it as is because I feel that like when I when I hear people saying like, oh, man, that's a cool, cool drawing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, that's not what I want out of this. <laughs> like, this you know, this yeah. needs to be like, you know, this is an awesome sculpt. Uh, I think that's like I always struggle with that. So that balance yeah. to me is like that's why I'm always just doing sketches and posting it like a like a raw screen screen grab from Zebra. It's just kind of no, this is not a drawing. This is what. Like there's a lot more to it than, than just, yeah. Know, the and that, that's like, when you do that, I appreciate, I mean, I appreciate all your stuff, but I think I always love to see like, you know, the, the raw stuff, right? Like, um, and it is unfortunate that people do view that as sort of like, Oh, it's a drawing. It's a sketch. Like it, it is as a, as, as a finished piece as a lot, in my opinion, as a lot of the more rendered to the pixel type stuff. Right. Cause you know, like for, for me, like when I look at a Bernini clay, you know, like you see his marble, yeah. beautiful. But then when, when, I, when you look at his clay work where it's just so much energy, there's a lot more study for me as an artist. Like when I look at your, your raw ZBrush files, like I'm like, man, that's his process. That's, that's his language speaking, you know, whereas if it's, if it's finished and rendered and all that stuff, it's beautiful. But for mine too, like it stiffens up. There's something about the process where... Yeah it just becomes stiffer. Whereas like if you're keeping it loose and gestural, I think it's more of the artist and how the artist expresses themselves retained in that versus like, Oh, it's a final illustration. And it's like, especially in CG, I think it's just everything kind of just becomes like from this dynamic thing to like, it adjusts itself. Right. Kind of. So. And how, how do you feel about that in medium? Cause like, to me, the one thing that I struggle is with the, the, full, the intention and the kind of the flow and, and I know medium sometimes could be a lot. You have to be a little bit more of like technical and to the process, right? So you don't lose yourself on on how you're building it. Do you feel that that that's coming more natural to you? Or what kind of things are you doing too? Yeah, it's, um, the the move tool has been a great help. Like you're just kind of like moving things around, but also like um, in medium actually, since it's like you you can just paint your strokes, right? Like you could just. Mm-hmm. Like I could paint that ZBrush logo, right? Like kind of just but I say that's my armature. That's my ZBrush logo. And then that'll be my guide to make my dynamic character based off of that uh, yeah. that, that gesture line. So it's actually very um, conducive for uh, for really gestural, gestural work, medium. Yeah. When you start with something on your piece, when you're going to start a project, and I, I know you've you've been and one of the things I love about your work is all the fantasy creatures and, and monsters and mm-hmm. I think you do that better than than you know anybody for for oh. uh, for those like creatures and it definitely speaks like you on a lot of those things. It's very hard to do actually, and I think you've done an excellent job every time I see a, a creature you. from you. Or um, how how do you start from like a from the creative side of things on on a project like that? Do you have a? I know you sketch in paper, but do you always do that, or is it something that just comes natural as you sketching in three D? Uh, a bit of both, I think. For the most part, my later pieces have been sketches, like <clears throat> the stuff that I do at Medium. For Medium, I've just been sketching a lot, mm-hmm. and um, but there'd be days where you know, like in ZBrush, just a sphere, I'm kind of just like you know, kind. Of, it's it's the equivalent to like you know when you're on the phone and you're like drawing on a like a sticky pad or something without really thinking you're kind of just like 
blah, 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 blah. You know, I kind of, there are days when I'm like, I just want to like unwind and this is a good way for me to just do that and kind of let my thoughts kind of just define what this, this thing mm -hmm. becomes. And I, I usually get some interesting results, but I think the best results I'm happy with are where are the ones where I kind of work it out on the sketch pad first, where I'm kind of just like, oh, this is a good thumbnail. And then I'm going to do a more detailed version of that. And then I take that into Medium or ZBrush as a reference image and then work off of it. Um, I usually get the best results that way yeah. for, for my more fantastical kind of stuff. So. And, and how do you think you, you arrive at, at where, you, where you are right now? Because like, to me, it, this is very hard to learn. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you got that from studying other artists like Carlos or, or this is something that from, from, from a child you've been kind of building up with like movies and stuff. Like how, how do you actually learn how to form and, and design and you know, all that? Oh, a lot of it definitely came from Carlos, like studying his work. Like I'm like, I, I am a, I know, like a disciple of his, like I, I try to break out of, of his style because like, early on I was just like I was studying his stuff right like I was just like monster I was just like just yeah. watching like all the form languages so I, I, I've, I've, I've inherited a lot of like his design sensibilities which I, I don't think is a good thing for him it's not a favor on him sure. because you know so I've been trying to kind of do my own stuff uh, hopefully um, but it took me a while I think just you know looking at other things outside of Carlos his work like just nature a lot of nature a lot of uh read reading actually helps a, a lot of um in, inform a lot of my creativity because when i read i have an image in my head that's yeah. not out of someone's of someone's work it's like my own and i'm like oh that's cool i'm gonna i'm gonna remember that i'm gonna draw that so i think i've i've gotten a little bit more of my own stuff uh and yeah when i was a kid like i'm i had a certain style of drawing that you know i'm kind of like reverting back to before a lot of the major influences that have informed my professional life kind of came about, you know? Um, so, but yeah, like it's just, a, you know, confluence of things really like, uh, like just doing it and doing it and having a lot of interest is really what, what'll get you to a point where you're, 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 a, you're okay at it or, you know, you're good at it, I guess. Yeah. You feel okay about your skills. <laughs> and I think we're all like the same, right? Like, yeah, it's okay, you know. Like, uh, I could be better for sure, you know. Yeah, definitely for me, it's just uh, getting to a point where you're just doing it and you're not afraid of failing. Yeah, and you just if it's not okay, then yeah, just move on to something else. But yeah. sometimes you do get stuck into that, like I'm not ready or I'm not good enough, and mm -hmm. just like breaking away from that is important. Yeah, and showing it out there too, you know, like. Uh, takes a lot of courage to show work out there. So it's like, you know, I think that's, that's almost like a good sort of like, Oh, I'm done with this. I'm happy or not. I'm just going to post it. Right. Yep. So. Yes. Yeah. Detaching yourself from the, the public. Yeah. Opinion you're, like, and just you're like done. <laughs> getting it out there for you. Yeah. No, definitely for me, that's something that changed my, on the mindset in this last couple of years of like, <clears throat> I'm just putting that for you, for you and, uh, whoever's going to enjoy is going to enjoy it. And you just keep going like, dude, I'll never feed myself off of like, you know, uh, comments and, and likes and shares and all that stuff. It's just more of like, I'll put it out because I know people want to see, would like to see it. I'll, I think you know, just getting inspired or inspiring the community or getting inspired by it. Like that's the reason why, you know, you put it out there and then just keep going to the next thing. Yeah. Cause if you get people saying like, you know, I love your work, Raph, Geo, you know, like, why wouldn't you want to put more out there, right? Like if it's bringing joy to, to people or like inspiration and stuff like, and you know, that's, I think a lot of what people should do, like student or not, like put your work out there because it's going to inspire someone. And you don't know, like the internet's huge. Yeah. No one may, may be like DMing you about like, oh, this is awesome. But eventually they will. It'll get to a point where you are affecting someone with the, the work that you do, right? Good or bad. <laughs> Yeah, so. 100%. Yeah, and it's all about the community as well. Just building that. Like, the, the, even to, like, I don't I don't get the chance to reply to a lot of comments or, or message that people send me just because the, like, with everything that's been going on in my life. But mm -hmm. you do get, I do know, like, and try to inspire as much as I can, you know, with the time that 
that we all have that I have. So yeah, no, and you're doing an amazing job, man. Like I, like I got to tell you that that's your. Oh, I think like your 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 work speaks for itself, and like you even doing this stuff, giving a platform for artists to uh, to talk. You know, it's you're doing good in the community. So thanks, man. And hopefully, this is an opportunity for for us, like 3D artists, like just to talk about different stuff that we don't. There's not a lot of places where you get just different type of information, a little less of a presentation and just more of like sharing what's been going on and, and how yeah. do we go about certain stuff. So yeah. I hope it helps. Yeah. So I'm going to start taking some questions from the chat and guys, you can yeah. send questions. I, I still have a couple more things I want to ask, but mm -hmm. um, I'll grab some of the stuff from the chat. Um, I think early on, uh, Renan just asked like what softwares uh, we're able to do VR sculpting. I know we're using Medium. Yeah, that's what that's what Geo uses the most. Mm -hmm. But there's some other softwares too that uh, that you can kind of do sculpting, but not to the same extent to as Medium, right? I think PlayStation has one. Um, William B. Hand is an amazing illustrator. He's using this. Uh, I think it's Sculpt VR, Sculpt mm -hmm. VR for PlayStation. PS5 or four, no, PS4 and not PS5. Uh, <clears throat> he does amazing stuff with this. It's like medium, I guess, but like, you know, like not as robust, obviously. And then there's like Masterpiece VR, there's Tilt Brush. Mm -hmm. Tilt Brush, yeah. There's Quill, you know, which is more like Goro Fujita uses oh, that. Yeah. It's more sort of like um, not quite volumetric, like medium. But it's like strips, I guess. But you could you could render it out. Like he's been doing some really cool uh, renders with all that stuff. So there, there's quite a lot. Like um, yeah, I've been seeing a lot of like uh, people. I don't know if you've seen uh, Dreams that came out like uh, last yeah. month or a couple months ago. Where yeah. people do like a full game and they have like a sculpting tool for like people making <laughs> characters and stuff. It's crazy. It is a, that that I wish I don't know if that is that in VR. It probably is. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Then Dreams is another one. Like, um, I think it's been advertised. Uh, the w one of the main people in Dreams is is with the Medium team now. Like I saw on Twitter. So, you know, yeah. I wish that uh, like I don't have time to do it. Like I, actually, the the team went to the studio and they uh, they asked me to do some stuff. I was like, oh, we don't have time. But it was, it's an amazing tool that I wish I had a little more time to spend on. And, some of the things that we see online is, is crazy. Yeah, it, it looks like V-Ray renders, man. Like, yeah. Some, you know? Like, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, I know I know. Uh, Comic Legend just mentioned that, that we should look into crowd, crowdfunding for sculptures, that, that usually people do that. And I just want to touch on that a little bit because I agree with you, but I've always been scared of crowdfunding because of the like working with companies before, you never know if they're actually going to deliver or not. And uh, there, there are a lot of people, including myself, that that uh, sometimes you just don't get what you order, or especially making a, a production run on a statue. It's very scary of what you're going to get back. So I've always just funded my own projects, mm. knowing that I, I will lose money in case something happens. Because I've seen people where, you know, you put your reputation in line and it doesn't turn out the way you you want it to be and, and then people already pay for it and it's not nice. Yeah, I've seen that happen many times in <laughs> yeah. online. Yeah, in our industry. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, Jay just asked, uh, going off a little bit, do you think it's smart to be selective with what you post on ArtStation starting out, uh, even if you replace those pieces as you, as you get better? I don't know if you've done that. I'm sure you've probably done that. We all have done that before. <laughs> Just even Instagram, like I go through it and like ah, delete, 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 delete. Um, yeah, I think I think ArtStation being that that's more of a uh, a portfolio you give to people or people see from the industry, right? Definitely, I think. I think with anything, like just be selective. Even like if, even if I put up a sketch on on say Instagram, it has to be something I'm happy with. Like I'll post it as a story, you know, like maybe something I'm kind of not happy with, but to commit to like your, your gallery, I think, yeah, definitely be, be more selective than usual. And then, you know, as you get through the years and looking back and you're not happy with that anymore, then replace it. But I think when you do post something new, it should always be like something you're dead certain is going to be like, okay, 
this is going to get me a job, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. I, I agree with that. Yeah. Just, just be mindful. And as you, when you're starting, it's a little bit harder uh, you need to worry too much about our station when you're starting. Just try to work on your skills and get that, uh, get better. And then once you're happy with something, you, you can put it up there and, and just go from there. Um, uh, Rafael is asking, like, you guys mentioned letting go of personal preferences when it comes to pieces you make and giving it in more of what most people like. Could, could you give a personal example of it? So I, I can, I'll go first and you can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think f for me, um, it's not so much like uh, letting go of a lot of things. It's just finding what people like that you also like that you people like, uh, you know, sometimes could be curious about or, and then maybe focusing on that for a little bit, just to see if you can build some audience on of people that like, like what you like, and then you can build a community that way. But that's more talking about, uh, you know, if you want to expand your, your social following or whatever the case might be, or even just getting uh, within the craft, like people that like the same things that you like. So that's one thing that, that I'd like to just mention about that. But in a project itself, I think when I was touching base on that, it's just more on the professional side as well, or working for games and uh, collectibles, whatever. Anything that touches an audience, it's understanding what they want to see. That's why I think Gio mentioned about user testing and, and, uh, and then filtering that into the work. So it's not just you doing whatever you want. When you're serving a client, I think you need to have that sensibility of like understanding what what the task is and um so i can give many like examples like professionally like when when you're doing a statue like wolverine that's just not what you want to see off of a wolverine it's like i usually do researches seeing what's the more what what do people like uh working in the games like god of war whatever it is like you just have to uh understand what the what the end consumer wants and then you know putting that in yeah no, it's exactly, uh, I mean, I, I've, I have very little to add to that. You pretty much nailed it. Like, you know, when I was working on the, the Hulk, like that's, people have a firm idea of what the Hulk should look like. And it was attempted twice before the first Avenger Hulk. Uh, and it was, you know, deemed as failures. <clears throat> and, you know, like you have to kind of think, why Why did they fail? Why, why were they considered failures? You have to think that way. Like now that the baton has been passed on me, like, okay, so to make this successful, one, we have an amazing design by, by the Marvel guys. So, you know, they've, they've already done the work for me, but there's still some work that needs to be done on my end once, you know, like the Hulk is in pose or I need to fix the shots. I always have to like be firm about what made, makes a Hulk a successful Hulk, right? Based on, um, like the audience really you can't you can't just go well you know i think a hulk my version of what it would be cool is if the hulk had this kind of proportions or whatever like you have to kind of like throw that out the window um with anything like not just a hulk but with with like any given style especially if you're working on a game i would imagine or like uh you know anything that's going to be shipped from a company you know you have to like listen i think it all boils down to like listening to your team and to the people you're going to be servicing these products for, uh, with, I should say. Um, and again, just being, not being that type of artist where it's like all about your own personal vision, you know, that's good if you're a concept artist or you're, or you're, you know, like you're really trying to define that look. And then from there you have to like work with how to, how to like, you know, alter it obviously as it goes down the pipeline, but, if you're building the character, if you're you're in more of the production environment, you have to be open to to letting go of a lot of your artistic vision. I mean, at least that's how, that's how I've kind of learned throughout the years. Yep. So, that's yeah. why we all do personal projects because you have to learn yeah. how to get yourself from a product. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Cruz asks: Is it possible to make a portfolio as both concept artists and character artists? Is it viable to get a job that way? That's a it's an interesting one. I would imagine so. What do you think? I mean, you know, you you're both, aren't you? Yeah, I guess the uh, it's. I think as a concept artist, there are a lot of different skills that come with the job, right? Like when you when you're working 
or when you're studying and building a portfolio as a character artist, to me is a very specific set of skills that you need to have of like, you know, kind of mastering the sculpting, uh, inter interpreting a design, a concept, to, uh, translating it into 3D, right? And I think it's a very specific set of skills of like, you know, technical skills and all that, mm -hmm. that you don't necessarily need to have as a concept artist, where I think the set of skills then come with like, you know, being able to sketch and design and uh, which is kind of, I know they, they kind of intersect in some ways. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of character artists that could, you know, that that can and, and do a really good job as a as a concept artist, like like uh, Vitali and Fausto and, and all those guys that that uh, that work more on the design. But it definitely takes a lot of time for you to be a, a concept three D artist, where there's a different set of skills that comes with that. So I think it's possible, mm -hmm. but I definitely need to pick one. Yeah. Yeah, focus is always good, right? If you want to land yeah. a job, yeah, hundred percent. As a character artist, like you should, like pick a, at least have a concept concept art that you picked that you are making in three D and not necessarily is your design, because a lot of the times you're gonna get hired for the job. It's like how people are looking at how you interpret that, because uh, that's kind of what you're gonna be doing in the job. And as a concept artist, you just need to do a lot of creative, just creating. Everything is, you know, it's more about you and and how you creating designs. Yeah, yeah. You have to definitely know how to draw, <laughs> or at least at least uh, doodle in the paper. Yeah, yeah. And have ideas. <laughs> have yeah, exactly. Yeah, the creative side needs to be a lot more on, on point. Uh, Steve asked, uh, "This is more for you, Joe. Because uh, what's your advice for maximizing details and minimizing file size on medium?" I don't know if that's something that. Oh yeah, um, I am very strategic about where I uh, I kind of uh, separate. Like usually, like say for the head in one of the models here, like when I was like detailing the pores in that that movie, the you know because it's 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 uh, it's medium currently isn't like ZBrush where it can handle like you know tremendous amounts of polygons. You know, I, I usually like for if I'm building a face, I would like be strategic about like lopping off the or maybe not quite there, but like here, like say by the clavicle where there's a dip. And I've actually found a way to actually blend it seamlessly. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm kind of just like, you know, head, hands. Uh, that's usually those those two are areas I want maximum resolution in that's isolated from the rest. So I kind of just strategically lop those off. Uh, for that, um, yeah. Is this something because of the the file size itself, or just the the layer? I guess the voxel or whatever the resolution gets really heavy once you start when you work with a two, like you don't have enough detail, or what? Yeah, the resolution and just the mere fact that you know it's VR, so it has to render things twice. There's mm -hmm. there's a lot of uh, processing involved, and if it becomes too heavy, then once it starts jittery, it becomes jittery, then you start getting motion sickness. So oh, yeah, yeah. Be because of the fact that it's VR. So once we, we get bigger processors or whatever, uh, medium takes care of their file management in future versions. Um, and we get to sort of like ZBrush level uh, polygon pushing, then uh, yeah, it'll be the same. But for now I have to be strategic about where to uh, lop off the, the detail areas. How that's something I wanted to ask you, I forgot, but how is it for you just uh, working in VR for, for, I don't know how many hours you spend on, on it, but just like with the motion sickness and, and all that. Uh, motion sickness is fine. I, I don't really get motion sick anymore. Uh, if, if even like with medium, I never have, but uh, certain experiences in VR, like say, you know, like, uh, like maybe a game where you're moving, <clears throat> I would get motion sick, but, VR, since you're static and you're in control of the camera, there's no, at least for me, there's no problem. Um, and, you know, at the most I'm in VR, uh, man, it's like one time it was five hours straight, which is not healthy, not healthy at all. Uh, I usually try and, and uh, take like 30 minute breaks, you know, like uh, every one hour I just drink water, kind of like, oh, surf the net or something and then get back to it. Yeah. 
yeah, I have friends that work on games, VR games, and I, I, I must imagine like how tough that would be. And they even say, like, oh, we sometimes just put the VR like flipped so you can get the traction. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like you're working as uh, in the computer. Yeah, because uh, it's definitely something that once you get in, like I was playing a game. Um, what game was it? It wasn't Half Life. It was a. Uh... Never mind. It was. Just, it was just like one of those games. But you, then you get hours in there. So when you come out, it's like holy shit. <laughs> yeah, out, you're like you're kind of like questioning reality. You know. Yeah, exactly. but, uh... <laughs> It's crazy. I mean, yeah, the, the solution in this is not as real. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the, te the technology is amazing. Like, you could definitely get in there and, and forget that you are yeah. in, in a, you know, a virtual reality, I guess. Yeah. Leaning on desks that are not there could be, you know, <laughs> dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I first tried it in my kid. Uh, he was uh, four and you put it up and he was like, you know, that little, uh, that little demo with the robot? That like gives yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and he was actually like reaching out for things <laughs> on the table that don't exist. I'm like, yeah. how trippy is that? I know. I know. He thinks that he is in there. Yeah, and he's like trying to pet the thing, and it's like crazy because it also tracks your hands and stuff. It's like, yeah, it's like reacts to your hand, right? Like it's just yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I imagine how it's gonna be for him when he uh, he grows up, and if if it really like, you know, if he becomes normal, where mm -hmm. things are just. Because there's also like the AR and all that stuff that it was, yeah. it's going to become more of a normal thing for them. Like, yeah. I know. Yeah, whereas for us, it's like this, the phone. For them, it's probably going to be this. Um, yep. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows what it's going to be, you know, for that generation. Yeah. I remember seeing, uh, uh, you know, Mariano, Mariano Steiner? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He also, I remember seeing that he posted a, uh, like a virtual gallery of his models in mm -hmm. VR, that someone could go in there and look at the models that you had. Yeah. Like, how crazy is that? Like, have you done something like that? We actually, me, Sam, Bayard, Mariano, um, Fabio, uh, Andrea, like a lot of people, we gathered together our, our, uh, our pieces. And then Sam actually did a gallery, like a, a VR gallery where you can just go in and just kind of look around and Mm -hmm. admire these pieces like it's uh like you're in a gallery um yeah we we did that uh two years ago it was it was one of the trippiest things and sam sam even made like a sushi dinner like <laughs> just, <laughs> he modeled sushi and just put it on a, a table like it's an event you know yeah. but if you think about it like that could be art station in the future right like instead of like a website um, you put your, your goggles on, I'll go, oh man, let me see what Raf is up to, you know? Just, yeah. you have this room, this studio in VR specific to your taste, what it looks like, and then you have your your pieces in front of us. Like we're looking and then, you know, kind of like to the scale of what they should be. So if it's like, you know, like uh, if it's Batman, it's as tall as Batman or, you know, like uh, whoever else. Um, and that for me is exciting because you're viewing the work in the context of the best way to show the work that we do as, as character artists, as content creators, you know, is showing it in a 2D screen really the best way or in VR in front of you to be admired that way as, as a piece of like physical looking thing, right? So and maybe I'll also be there sculpting the piece so you see me. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, hey, I got to charge you for this, man. <laughs> <laughs> with the, uh, the quarantine now with the COVID, like maybe yeah. maybe you'll end up being something like that. You just come work right now. Just yeah. come like that. We're all VR and just looking at the guy next to you in the studio. Uh, that'd be trippy, man. Like if, if, if me medium ever comes up with a, you know, like multiple person thing like we could just do a monster night and they sculpting or modeling and, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, that would be amazing just with music on just like you, you're in your one corner there glauco whoever dom Dude. everyone's is welcome and okay, now you know this is what we we need to do this we're all sculpting on the same piece yeah we, yeah just kind of like a mashup of things right that would be so trippy that would be awesome all right joe
This this has been awesome, man. I appreciate you taking yeah. the time. Yeah. Yeah. We Thanks for having me. We should do this again, but just sculpting together something now that you that you brought that up. Not in Medium, but we could do it in, in Zebra, sharing the screen and all that. Yeah. No, that'd be cool. Like uh, just uh, more of a sculpting kind of a thing. That'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. We'll set it up. Cool, man. All right, man. Appreciate it. Take care. Right. You want to? I mean, I'll put your art station Instagram on the description. You guys can follow Gio if you haven't, if you're not following him yet, and and you guys know what to do. Yeah, no. If you're putting it there, that's all. Uh, that's all I want to pimp out. <laughs> awesome. Thanks cool. so much, Gio. All right, man. Thank, Thank you, guys. guys.